He is not here. He is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. We begin our Easter service this morning with hymn number 147. Please rise if you are able. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please do be seated. Welcome to St. Mary's this morning. Whether you are at home and joining us over the internet or whether you are here in the building having managed the time and the clocks celebrating Easter by springing forwards, you are most welcome. I am Elizabeth, this is Fiona, and this is Jill, who is going to be preaching this morning. We come together to celebrate the resurrection of Christ on this joyful day. Just so that we're clear, when we come to communion, if you've ever received communion before in a Christian church of any denomination, you're most welcome to do so here. And communion is valid in one kind or in two. Everyone is very welcome to come forward for a prayer of blessing if you, would, uh, if you prefer not to receive communion. Following the service, we have an Easter egg hunt for the children, and we suggest that you gather over here by this door with your adults, definitely bring your adults with you. Um, and during the service, there are some activities over here on this table. So feel free to stay in your pews. I was always the child who wanted to stay in my pew, or to uh, come and join in if you build up the courage later in the service. 
So Fiona is now going to mark our Easter candle. I'll show you that we are an eco-church, so some of you might have last year's order of service. The only two things that are different are the year and the gospel reading is from a different gospel. So if you think we're going wrong, don't worry, we're just trying to be eco. Thank you. Please stand. Christ yesterday and today. The beginning and the end. the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him. And all ages to him be glory, power, through every age and forever. Amen. Thank you. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God as we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. And the Spirit of God.
Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts in chapter 10, chapter 10, in which Peter testifies to the Gentiles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God, no particular, partic, particularity, but in every nation, every anyone who fears him and does what is right, is acceptable to him. You know the, the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the Baptist that John announced, how God anointed the Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went at about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to the. They put him to death by. Hang, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day. And, uh, and allowed him to appear. Not all the people, not all the people, but to us who were chosen by God's by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded to preach us to pre. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judged of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, was, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, this is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On our notice sheet, we have a section today with a space for you to respond to a question. You may have noticed it while waiting for the service to start. It's in the inside pages. And it says... How is God encouraging you this Eastertide? We've journeyed from Ash Wednesday through Lent into Holy Week, trying to understand the way of suffering, visiting the Upper Room and venerating the Cross on Good Friday. Now it's Easter Day and we once again discover that empty tomb. There have been opportunities to have a moving encounter with our Lord that can change our lives. Embracing this requires a leap of faith. The Son of Man has been glorified. So how is God encouraging me this Eastertide? I think it can be summed up in the word hope that springs from the power of the resurrection. Resurrection that wasn't a one-off event 2,000 years ago, or a future event when I die, but resurrection that gives hope for the here and the now. At the Queen's funeral service, the bidding words said, In grief and also in profound thanksgiving, we come to this house of God, to a place of prayer, to a church where remembrance and hope are sacred duties. I'd never thought of hope as being a sacred duty for those of us who are Christians. Duty has the sense of obligation and responsibility, something that we need to do even if we don't quite feel like it. As Christians, we're duty bound to hope, even in the most difficult circumstances. And we're certainly witnessing a lot of those in our daily lives and in our world at the moment. So this begs the obvious question, what is our hope as Christians based on? Christian hope lies in the fact that ultimately, through the power of the resurrection, God can bring new life out of difficult and destructive situations. We probably all long for God to act We think we know what good should be doing, and he needs to be doing it now. But God's ways and timings aren't ours, and Jesus is the ultimate proof of that. In the troubled times of the Roman occupation, people longed for a strong, powerful military leader. But there was no great demonstration of power, no sending of a superhero type of saviour as people were expecting. Instead, God took a huge risk in entering the messiness and pain of the world as a small, vulnerable baby, who was totally dependent on his earthly parents, whose ministry was a window into the true nature of God's way, which brings healing and reconciliation. 
and who grew to follow the path of service and self-sacrifice, which led ultimately to the agony and apparent defeat on the cross. On that cross, the forces that opposed God's way appeared to triumph. Christian hope lies in the fact that ultimately, through the power of the resurrection, God can bring new life out of difficult and destructive situations. Hope's an interesting word. It can be something that is quite weak and fragile, depending on the context and the situation people find themselves in. We often say, hopefully it will work out. And there's a lot of doubt in that phrase. Or if we say, I hope my football team wins and it happens to be at the bottom of the league, there's a significant amount of scepticism in that. Here are two quotations about hope that might be helpful. The first is from Barack Obama. Hope is that thing inside us that insists, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that something better awaits us if we have the courage to reach for it and work for it and to fight for it. And someone else has defined hope as the little voice you hear whisper, maybe when it seems the entire world is shouting, no. And perhaps that's what Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome were thinking in the Gospel reading this morning when they brought the spices to Jesus' tomb. They were troubled after witnessing the death of their friend and probably afraid too as they visited his tomb. They were concerned to do it early at daybreak and they were also concerned about how they were going to roll away the stone at the entrance to the tomb. Perhaps they were hoping for a gardener or someone to help them. Perhaps they were wishing that they could turn the clock back and save Jesus from his gruesome trial and torturous death on a cross. And perhaps they were hoping that it had all just been a terrible dream. They certainly didn't expect to find an empty tomb and a young man dressed in a white robe. And understandably, they were alarmed. Then they're told not to be alarmed by this person. He had a message for them. He pointed out that Jesus was no longer there, but had gone ahead of them to Galilee. He said they were to tell his disciples and Peter that they would see Jesus there just as he had told them. And understandably, I'm sure we would have done the same, they fled. They were alarmed, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. They were dumbstruck. They were afraid. And there, Mark's Gospel ends. Thankfully, we have the other Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles to give us a fuller picture of what happened next and the consequences of what we now know as that first Easter morning. The reading from Acts tells us that there were many witnesses to the resurrection and they testified that Jesus was the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. They also realised that all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. God's salvation plan has been fulfilled. Death has lost its sting, and we have the promise of life in all its fullness, just as God intended for his creation. And that's certainly something to celebrate and be thankful for. And indeed, we're celebrating this morning in our worship and when we celebrate the Eucharist, remembering all that Jesus has done for us. And we're called to hope in God, and be signs of hope, especially in these troubled times. So where can we see these signs of hope at the moment? Do we see signs of hope in the small, seemingly insignificant things people do? Those small acts of kindnesses that can warm your heart? An unexpected phone call which was so timely? A small donation? an invitation to someone who's on their own. 
feeling moved to pray? And do we see those signs in the bird song at dawn this morning? The birds were singing their hearts out. And it certainly gives us hope that a new day has started and life goes on. The trees at the moment are bursting with blossom and they've survived the strong winds and there's still fresh new leaves. And perhaps we see signs of hope in the smile of a child discovering the awesomeness of our world. Once you start looking for signs of hope, it does begin to feel more encouraging and bring smiles to our faces. My journey to Easter this year has reminded me that we also have a sign of hope in the empty cross. And we took palm crosses home on Palm Sunday. We venerated a large wooden cross here in front of the altar on Good Friday. And many of us perhaps have holding crosses that fit into the palms of our hands and help us when we're praying, when perhaps we're lost for words. It's always good to see that symbol of hope. And then this morning at the dawn service, we were given candles while we heard the exalted and all about um, God's plan for us. And we were invited to decorate our candles. And I found myself just listening to the music, putting a cross on my candle with the beeswax which we were given. And that's something I should be lighting later in the week. When doubt creeps in and words fail us, we can hang on to that symbol of God's love for us, remembering Jesus' open arms on the cross, his hands held out, holding us in love. And that gives us that light and hope that resurrection brings in the midst of darkness. Our bishop, Bishop Gooley, always sends an Easter message to all the churches. And she reminds us this year that what we heard this morning in the Gospel is the Easter story and it's ours to tell. It's challenging, mysterious and life-changing. It offers light and hope in the midst of darkness. Bishop Gooley commends it to us, as indeed I do to you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us renew and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in this is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the church, for our world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Heavenly Father, on this glorious Easter morning, we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, and come together to rejoice and praise you. We give thanks for the many blessings and joys of this life, for springtime, as we see afresh the wonders of your creation and the promise of new life and hope. Guide us to better become stewards of your world, to care for it and every living thing. Lord, in your mercy, as we celebrate Easter Day with Christians around the world, we pray for your church in every country, for its leaders, and those who do mission work in difficult places. 
We pray for peace in our world. We ask that the peace promised by Christ will be a reality for all people, especially those in Palestine and Israel and Ukraine. We bring to mind countries divided by conflict, particularly Haiti. We pray that there will be much needed relief for those who are oppressed and are struggling to survive. We ask your blessing on King Charles and all the royal family. Give wisdom and compassion to all those who make decisions in our government, that they may prioritise the many needs of the people of our country above self-interest. We pray for our Church of St Mary's, for Elizabeth and the ministry team, and all who contribute to the life of our church. We ask that we may reflect your love in our church, in our homes and families, and our friends in the community of Woodford. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you were raised up after your time of passion and suffering. We pray for all those who are suffering now, for the lonely, the unemployed, the homeless, those who are addicted and the despairing. Comfort them and bring hope to their hearts. May the light of the risen Christ shine in their darkness to bring joy and a new beginning. We pray for those who are sick, whether at home or in hospital. And remember all doctors, nursing staff and carers. Give them patience and compassion as they use their skills to heal others, as your son healed those around him. And we remember, especially in our parish, Pam Gardner, the Lee family, Maureen Dunbar, Rita and Tim Partridge, Jane Godwin, Jean Moody, Eileen Duffus, Gift Agu, John Medway, Arthur Ryle, and Jenny Bacos. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. On the first Easter day, Christ overcame death and rose to life again. May those who have died rejoice in your presence. And we remember those who have died recently. Gary Holmes, Constant Maidment, Kate Green, Derek Williams, Andrea Mack, David Godwin, Wilma Della Priya, and Glynis Parry. As the risen Christ brought relief to the anguish and distress of the women at the empty tomb, be with those who mourn and those who are overwhelmed by the grief of losing a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection, on their year's mind we recall Charles Newman, Albert Baitup, Jeff Peacock, Audrey Barclay, and Kathleen Whitfield. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Soon we are going to be singing the hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. If you're using a hymn book, that's hymn 163, and we're missing out the second verse, but everything will be on the screens. Alleluia. Apologies. Can't have too many alleluias today, can we? <laughs> Alleluia! Alleluia! The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Hallelujah. Lord of life, with unbounded joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power. Through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and on this day of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of life eternal. 
And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, thank you to all of you for your presence and your participation in this wonderful celebration of Easter joy. And thank you to all the many, many people who have come together to make our Lent and Holy Week and Easter worship happen. So thank you hugely to all of you. Following the service, please do stay for coffee, which will be served over here. If you are a child or young person and interested in the Easter egg hunt, do meet Claire over at the south door. Please do bring your adults with you because the churchyard is quite large um, and we aren't able to watch all of the children at the same time. So um, please do. And I understand that the chocolate is not outside for all sorts of... It's not really about it melting today, but <laughs> so come back to Claire for your prizes. There are also eggs for everybody in the foyer, so please do make sure that you um, take an egg as you go. There will also be two people available in the chapel to pray with you confidentially about anything at all. Today we are collecting money for the Bishop of Chelmsford's Lent appeal. Jill mentioned Bishop Gully in her sermon, and Gully is inviting us to donate to support healthcare provision that is administered by the Diocese of Jerusalem to those um, across the region of the Middle East. And it is offered to people in need, regardless of race or religion or ability to pay. So there will be a collecting box on your left-hand side as you go out for cash. And there is also a link on the notice sheet where you can give electronically. So thank you in advance for doing that. Easter is a huge celebration, and this can often be a time when God gives us a little nudge, and that might be in all sorts of directions. Uh, we are looking forward, noting uh, that Fiona lit the Paschal candle afresh this morning. This is the candle that we light for baptisms, and we are looking forward to Pentecost on the 19th of May, when we will celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We will be baptizing children in the morning, and there is an opportunity nearby to join some adults from St. Mary's who would like to be baptized or confirmed. Bishop Lynn is coming, so if that might be of interest, or you might have another idea, please do have a chat with me and we'd be very glad to help you to get ready. Our annual meeting is coming up so the parish church electoral roll is up for review. If you are new to us please do sign up on one of the forms over there and do check if you're already on that list check that we have your details uh, correctly. There are, we would normally have an evening service, but as Jill has alluded to, uh, we started at 5.45 this morning, so there isn't an evening service today, I am afraid, but there will be next week. And in terms of things happening, this coming Friday is the first Friday of the month, so there will be a delicious lunch served in the first floor room here with homemade soup and lots of delicious things. It is not a Lenten lunch. There will be pudding and tea and coffee and fruit and salad and all sorts of lovely things. And we suggest a donation of £5. That's at 12.30 on Friday. I think those are all the things that I need to mention. The wardens are not madly waving at me. Bereavement Cafe. The Bereavement Cafe is happening this Tuesday and every first Tuesday of the month from two until just after three o'clock, I think. 
Yes, and that's upstairs. That is offered to everybody regardless of faith and is an opportunity to be listened to if you are grieving. And it's uh, much valued. Thank you for mentioning that. So, can I invite you, if you're able, please, to stand. If anybody was counting the Alleluias, I think you've probably long since given up. Um, we are going to be singing shortly hymn 160, Thine Be the Glory. But first, let us ask God's blessing upon us. And I don't know how many Alleluias Fiona is going to lead us in after that. So watch out. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Did. Alleluia, alleluia. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.